my one and only Dendrobium nobili. I will just go with no ID because these commercially grown Dendrobiums, unless there's a tag in there, they, the white blooming ones, they all look so very similar. The reason for this video is perfect timing. Yes, it's not in bloom, but we'll get there. And Fernanda Garcia, even though we communicate, I use Google Translator and your English is much better than my Portuguese, I do believe that a little care video is something that would help you out and you wanted it. So if I'm wrong, Fernanda, then let me know in the comments below. But seeing as I'm at this stage with my Dendrobium nobili, as opposed to in spring, when we hopefully see blooms, I also want to give a little bit of insight then about how I take care of mine, what I've recognized about it in the last two and a half, well, maybe three years that I've had it. And it's possible that it can be of help to you. And anybody else watching this video, thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate it. All the knowledgeable gurus, I really, really appreciate if what I say is contradictory and that you would mention that in the comments below so that anything trail of thought can be clarified for the benefit of everybody, including myself. Right, so it is now the third week of November and I have nubbins showing. And this is the first part of my care regarding the snowbilly. I have been pushing all summer with a lot of fertilizer and keeping that reservoir topped up to the max and flushing it regularly. And I use a strength of 300 ppm. My preferred setup, you can see, is Lekka, only Lekka and self-watering. So during the months of active growth, I am just making sure that this orchid gets so much water as much as it can handle. And now that these growths have finished, you can see that the leaf here at the end is a bit smaller. It comes out at the top of the apex. So it doesn't have any more potential of growing. And the cane is now as thick as the ones it came with. Not as tall, but I'll get to that as well. But we have the same thickness of the cane as previously. So when these canes had finished growing, I did not stop watering because we're talking still September, October, and it, in my climate, it is still warm. I had temperatures up to 25 degrees, but I did continue to water. I left the reservoir with only RO water. So I did not reduce any kind of watering, despite the facts the canes were mature. However, now I've got little nubbins showing. And I should actually think, okay, it's doing something and I'm going to fertilize. But I am now only waiting to fertilize when I see actual buds forming, coming out. It still gets water, but no fertilizer. And I'm going to wait for these nubbins to show me buds. If they choose to produce keikis, then there was something off in the culture of the orchid during the growing season. And that could be two factors. I'd let it go dry or it got too much light. Mine lives in full sun most of the growing season. Even though the leaves seem kind of delicate, they can take that full sun. Of course, when a new growth starts, I gradually increase the light level in order to then have it out in full sun. Full sun can give two things, blooms or keikis. But one thing that will guarantee you to get keikis if I were to start fertilizing right away, just because I see nubbins, okay, fertilize. Like with some dendrobiums, when you see something happening, you go straight to fertilizing. For example, my Dendrobium tetragonum, pushing buds, I'm fertilizing straight away. With these nobili types, it's not a good idea to do so, to give any nutrition until obvious buds are visible. There's plenty of storage in that cane to do what it's doing. There are other culture tips that say it should be dry. In my climate, 
I don't do that. It lives outside all year round. My temperatures can go as low as five degrees Celsius. Mainly they are eight, but it can go, worst case scenario is five degrees Celsius. This nobody lives outside. The highest temperature that it has to tolerate can be anywhere 35 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. So if anything affects blooms or growths, it's the lack of water or too much fertilization and it becomes a cakey machine. If you have done all of these other factors correctly with the nobly and you have a new nobly in the house, from my experience with this one commercial one, I get K keys the first year more than I would get blooms. So all these little canes you see down here, this one, let me push it back, this one, this one, there's two K keys back here. These were last year's K keys and I put them back in the pot. The second year is now a cane that has grown from the base of a keiki. That's year two. This is all part of the orchid getting acclimated to my environment or if you're buying a nobly to your environment. It doesn't always have to be the case, but more often than not, the first year in possession, when there is active growth, there will be more keikis than blooms. These keikis all bloomed for me in the spring. So it wasn't, I wasn't without blooms, it's just I didn't have proper canes. This cane of this year came from the base of a keiki, and so did this cane. And you can see it is only half the size of what it should be. These are the canes I bought it with. So we're still not there yet with regards to the orchid actually coming into its own. Year three, would be my next spring and summer. That is when I expect, expect better, better, taller, more substantial growth. So despite having said all that, let me show you what this one is doing and this can happen and how I'm going to go about it. And I know it was doing something because I saw it the other day and I was like, oh, okay. That's why this video is happening right now. Let's go in and have a look-see. There, it's already starting a new growth from the base of a cane that has not bloomed, but it's already starting on the next one. So what's going to happen here is that I'm going to focus my care for this orchid at this point in time, I'm focusing my care on achieving blooms as opposed to keikis. That new growth has plenty of time and storage to develop without me putting fertilizer in it. Again, with any other dendrobium, new growth, get the fertilizer started in order to push the growth. In this case, that would be too soon just because there's a new growth. My focus is on trying to culture this orchid in such a way that I will get these canes to bloom. The growth can be pushed at a later stage. And if it becomes one of those small winter growths, which is also possible, that's not a problem either. I always say whether you're going to bloom or not, that growth gives me another storage structure and it's all good. It'll also provide roots. So this is the conundrum with the nobilies that are commercial. And that's why I'm only addressing the commercial nobilies. I do not have a species nobly. I know that their care needs to be much more targeted and not as wishy-washy as what I'm saying about these commercial ones. These commercial ones are pretty forgiving, but it is important to note that it's not that you're doing something wrong if you're getting keikis after you've brought it home from a store, it's finished blooming, and then it starts to just produce keikis. That's nothing to do with whether you're doing something wrong or not. These dendrobium nobly types will chuck out keikis. It's a form of a stress signal. They've changed their environments. I don't know how many times until they come into your home. And that 
triggers keiki production because it's their only form of survival. Nothing to do with how you're taking care of it. But water is super, super important. So depending on your climate, depending on whether you're growing outdoors or indoors, all factors in with the watering cycle. I never let mine go dry. Mine tolerates the temperatures outdoor in my climate as far down as five degrees Celsius. Even though I never let that microfiber go dry, the only difference I make is when do I fertilize, when don't I? And I will only now start its fertilization when I see the buds forming on these nubbins that are starting to grow right here. Up till then, it's just water. I have found that these nobly types are also very, very prone to mealybugs. So you can see that my canes are pretty much stripped bare because I go in with a rag and I take off as much of the sheaths that I can. Usually the pests will focus and concentrate in the little leaf joints of the new growths. That's like their salad buffet of choice. I lost two growths this year on this one because of mealybugs. Not for any other reason, and it was too late until I recognized what the problem was. But again, the beauty of this orchid is that even a basal growth that has failed will produce roots. So yes, I was a bit cross because I wanted to see how far I could push all the canes that were growing. But on the other hand, I have some more roots. So there's a little bit of a weighing out of the positives and the negatives there. And I have one and a half like cane that will bloom for me in the spring if I get the fertilization timing correct, which is pretty easy. Only water until buds start to show on the canes. I think I have covered everything. If there is something else that I did not cover, then please Fernanda, let me know in the comments below if this has created other questions. Also, fire away in the comments below. And everybody else that has a bigger collection of nobilies, it would be awesome if there's anything else that I did not cover or it sounded like I was talking in circles or misleading. Please also clarify that in the comments below. I would encourage that because at the end of the day, I can only say what I'm doing in my Mediterranean climate in the hope that any other environment that takes this information can at least adapt to fit and suit what they do in their environment. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, click on the video, leave a comment. I really appreciate it. And Fernanda, you let me know if I did your request justice and I hope to see some nobilies on your channel. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.